Hi everyone, this is TVGS, it's me, Leon, and are you ready to raise the flight with us today as we welcome the latest collaboration booster for the Gundam series, which is the CB16 Iron Flowers Battlefield. So this set contains not just the touch-up from the previous set, which is uh, for the Gundam 00, Gundam Unicorn, and Gundam Seed. This set also brings forward two new sets as well which will be the Gundam Seed Destiny deck, which will be the Destiny Gundam and Legend Gundam. And of course, the many favorite Gundam Iron Blooded Orphan. So we'll get to see Barbados as well as the Loop and the... Not Looper, sorry. The Gushin Rebake. Okay, just take note, this set contains the Season 1 of the entire uh, Gundam Iron Blooded Orphan, so we definitely won't see Looper Rex here, which is unfortunate, but hey, it's still Barbados. Who doesn't love Barbados? Okay, so... Just to go through a bit of content that is currently will be in this box will be 45 commons, uh, 18 rares, 8 master rares, 8 tensei rares, 6 x rares, and 1 double x ray. Alright, okay, so before we get to opening the box, let's just see how does the cover looks like. So as before, there is no longer the BS points, but instead they will be giving the tensei uh, proxy cards for the Tensei cards that will be in this set itself. Okay, and this uh, this set has a very nice red and white contrast between two kind of like the Dekadan colors. I love it. And then right at the side here, you see the other forms from Form 1 to Form 6 uh, Barbados that was featured in the entire Season 1. So as you can see here, there's no signs of Lupus, so this set itself does not include things from the second season, which we're more likely to see in the next set. Uh, let's have a quick open up to the box itself. Okay, so when you open up the box, apparently there is a box topper, which is the Tekkadan sleeves, which contain 20 pieces each, much similar towards the Ryuki sleeve, Blade sleeve for the Kamen Rider sets, which uh, there's also an announcement for the upcoming uh, Rider set that contains the O sleeve. But yeah, but this is the Gundam one. This is the Gundam uh, Tekkadan sleeve. It's a must have. I love this one. I love this so much. Okay, as for the booster pack, this is what we are expecting. Also, same thing, it's the nice red-white contrast and it's a, it has a very nice design to it. I really, really love it. Nice and shiny. So yeah, we have the pack information that if you can read, read Japanese, then that's good for you. And all that kind of stuff. Alright, so it's been a while since we did a unboxing video face front. So today is one of those, uh, we'll finally be doing this again, which will be opening up the packs right in front of everybody. So let's see what we get today. Ah, we got our first X-Ray, the Susano, used by uh, Mr. Bushido, or should we say Graham. He's also in the setup. So. Okay, here's our PTSD induced main character Shin Asuka for Seed Destiny. So okay, since this is a uh, Seed Destiny boost after all, so uh, he the deck will be focused with Sam. I'm pretty sure. And of course, best girl in the house, Minerva. Biscuito! Yes, set. Biscuit will be here. It's in here as well. The Nexus apparently, it's not a pilot. But Nexus seems to be more prominently blown up these days. Oh, we got the second extra, which is Destiny. Destiny is a really good card, I heard. I, said, I saw some of the skills. And it's actually not bad. It's actually pretty good. It does <laughs> surprisingly the X-ray does more justice for him here than it did for his own series. Oh yes, the Olga Grand Walker.
Oh no no, it's a legend! So this is all the x-ray that we got for this opening. Okay, now that we have done opening the box, uh, allow me to arrange and then we'll see you in just a bit. And we are back. Okay, so right now, this is all the x-ray that has been revealed in the box that we just, just opened. And we we'll only be covering the x uh, onwards for the unboxing video as per usual. So if you wish to see any of the rest of the cards for and translation for the other things in the set, please do remember to visit World of Cards to check out the remaining cards that you will get to see from the set itself. Okay, um, before we get on to the cards itself, we here are the proxy cards for the Tensei. So just that you know, there's only two in here, so that means there isn't a lot of uh, Tensei that's being rained in this set. So do remember to keep this for your main deck and put them in and mark down which cards you are playing. Okay. So now, moving into the X-Rays themselves, we have, we'll start from the far right here based on their numbering, which is the Legend Gundam. Okay, so Legend himself is from the family of MS. Zaf and Faith. Okay, this card is unaffected while in your hand or in the open zone. And you can summon it during flash timing of your opponent's attack stat as a cost 5. If you've done so, send uh, up to 8 opposing spirit of BP 10,000 or lower back to the hand. And it has a level 1, 2, and 3 BPS armor that costs uh, that is unaffected by opposing effects of original cost 7 or less. It's level 2 and 3 is when this spirit attacks all blocks. You may send one opposing spirit nexus to, of cost 7 or less to the bottom of the deck. Okay, this card is somewhat versatile. Similarly, like RK, uh, this card, I feel that it can be mixed into every other deck if you know what you're doing. Just that RK is still a lot more easier to play because it's based on whoever has their life is damaged or spirit is destroyed. For him, he does get an advantage when he's in hand and you can prop it up and summon it during flash timing and you have done so, you can not only summon it at a much lower cost than its original and which is probably intention for it as well as send up to 8 opposing spirit of 10 BP or lower back to the head which is fairly easy these days and a lot of small, smaller spirit might be running around and you probably don't want to set off those on destroyers so this is very helpful the VPS armor is one of the most prominent thing in seed uh, and seed destiny at this moment because of it allows it to be unaffected by cost 7 or less, depending on the number actually. It's like if it's like 5, then it'll be 5 and below, so and so forth. But this also means effect like magic, nexuses, it will not be able to touch them, which is actually very irritating. And the numbers are quite high because like cost 7 or less. So easily that covers a very wide range. So the only way to ease to easily take them down, you need to play fire with fire by having something that is cost 8 above to deal with them. His on attack and block is also fairly strong as well, considering that you may send one opposing spirit on Nexus or cost 7 or less to the bottom of the deck. Which sending Nexus to the bottom of the deck is something I have not heard in a long time. Um, as a matter of fact I don't even recall if there was actually one that sends to the bottom of the deck. Mostly it's either you bounce the Nexus or you destroy the Nexus. There is hardly a send to the bottom of the deck uh, for Nexus for the most part, at least in my experience so far. And then my, again, my experience in Battle Spirit is uh, ill comparison to Brendan. But so maybe Brendan may have uh, may have heard of something like that. But still, this is a very strong skill. But of course, it does not have a restanding ability. So I guess that's the only downside. But it still activates on defense. So that means if your opponent are planning to set off a Tensei and it requires it to do certain things, and you can take, care, take the advantage to send it to the bottom of the deck, which is very, very helpful. Okay, moving on to Destiny Gundam, the star player of the Seed Destiny set as well as the main protagonist machine of Shin Asuka at the uh, closing to the end of Seed Destiny series itself. The, this is also a MS Zaf and Faith machine. Okay, it has a level 1, 2, and 3 VPS armor 7 or less, just like Legend, which also makes it unaffected by opposing effect of original cost 7 or less. Then level 1, 2, and 3, when this spirit attacks, destroy one opposing spirit of BP equal or lower than this spirit, and for each symbol on the destroyed spirit, send one call from your life uh, from your opponent life to the void. Level 2 and 3, flash timing, both players at, uh, attack stat, 
by exhausting one of your Nexus slash Grand Walker Nexus from the family Zah. This pretty refreshes. Okay, so Destiny uh, surprisingly has been done much uh, better than uh, than its own series. It's, um, it's a very powerful X-ray actually because it's like not only the VPS armor makes it irritating to get rid of and he's cost 9 so he actually bypasses VPS armor on its own much like Legend and he's on attack ability destroy one opposing spirit BP equal or lower than this spirit and he himself is 15k 15k is pretty decent for a lot of white spirits and now on his highest level which is level 3 makes him 23,000 that's fairly big uh, that's, that's a lot of uh, more towards the high end he actually peaks compared to the higher end uh, units and he when he destroys them he sends a call uh, for each symbol on that destroyed spirit send one call for an opponent's life to the void no less so instead of the usual uh, opponent take one uh, life to reserve he sends it to the void for some reason and that is very devastating because sometimes you have to take certain traits and you want to have your spirit destroyed just so that you can get some calls from the into your reserve and stuff like that but he denies that and it's actually quite an annoyance really and if you are brave and that makes things far worse because you're gonna take two to void and that's gonna be a much more harder to recover from in a lot of ways and he is also again not really restricted by which what kind of deck he needs to be playing except for his level two and three where he requires you to rest a Nexus or Grand Walker Nexus from the family Zark specifically. So you cannot mix it in with other uh, white cards for it to do its refresh, but however, it can work with the previous Zark cards from the first set to, to refresh probably the Mothership for the most part, or even a Haru. So it helps, and of course with the Grand Walker Nexus that's currently in this set, uh, which we didn't get with uh, Gabriel, will, act will definitely help to speed up the fight. And since it's a refresh on both players at extent, it can be used offensively and defensively, which is quite impressive. Okay, then next, moving on to the next card is the Susano. Susano is what is the rival machine uh, of Setsuna, uh, or at least should I say the person who is in rival to Setsuna, uh, Graham. He uses uh, this machine, and he this is a MS slash A Law family. Okay. Level 1, 2, and 3, Bushido. During the start of the attack step, you may compare BP of the spirit and one opposing spirit. The spirit with the equal or lower BP is destroyed. If only the opposing spirit is destroyed, activate the following effects. Uh, send one call from your opponent's life to the reserve. When, as for its uh, next level 2 and 3 effect, when this spirit attacks, if you have spirit with Top Gun slash Bushido, when your turn ends, add additional attack step and end and end step once. Whoa. This is quite cool actually. So his level 1, 2, and 3, Bushido, is kinda like the red variant of the dual mechanic where at the instead of the start step, this is like uh, at the start of the attack step, you may compare BP of this spirit and one opposing spirit. The spirits with equal or lower BP is destroyed. So it's kind of so it's kind of like an on effect destroy. It's just comparing BP. They're not fighting actually. So uh, if the opposing spirit is destroyed, you activate the following effect, which is send one call from your opponent's life to the reserve. That means if this card somehow comes in very early into the game, it actually allows it to irritate the field by dealing with the smaller grunt units and then making it shoot life. And then he has a le the level two entry, which is when uh, which is when this spirit attacks. If your spirit with Top Gun or Bushido, uh, if you have those spirits, your turn and when your turn ends, you get an additional attack step and end step. So that means you can make so you can use the Bushido skill again. So it makes this card super aggressive. And not to mention his double symbol. So if let's say you have successfully did the first Bushido, he will take one and you attack in, and he takes two more because of his double symbol. You start the attack step again and use Bushido again to deal with another smaller unit if he's not blocking. And so this makes him also a very uh, tough opponent to deal with and highly advise be careful when you deal against him. Although I do see a bit of downside is that it's cost 8 and 4 reduction so it is pretty heavy to drop him in uh, early into the game but I believe there is a way to do it and when he does come out he will be quite a force to be reckoned with. Okay, 
since there's only three X-ray and we cannot miss out Oga. Oga is too important to be missed out. So uh, at least to uh, to me and to some of my fr our friends here in CVGS, we I am rather often holds a very special place in our heart. So Oga Itzka. He is a Grand Walker. He's an Emirate Grand Walker, as a matter of fact. He's a Grand Walker with the family Tekkadan. Okay. So the usual uh, Grand Walker ability where he cannot be targeted unless specific skill targets it. And then he's Call Charge on Tekkadan, Tewise, Tekkadan, Tewise, and Brave. So he uh, so he actually charges a lot of things actually. Within his family, okay. Then he has a grand skill for level one and two. During the start of both players' attack step, send four cards from the nexus to the void. Summon one card from the family Tekkadan from your trash without paying the cost. This effect does not activate call charge. His level uh, two is his grand field flash. During your attack step, once per turn by discarding the top three cards of your deck, uh, draw one card from your deck, and then during this turn, opposing effects cannot end the attack step. So whatever you do, don't stop. Yes. Just as his last words before he died in the series. Which is... I'm so glad that he became a ground walker here. Immortalized. <laughs> but okay, so... The thing about it is that he doesn't charge once per turn and he charges regardlessly whether it's of any cost, which makes him very easy to charge considering that uh, what is known about the Tekadan deck, they are a rush deck. They are proper rush deck. Purple Rush and uh, they also do a lot of uh, call removal so making him a very in, uh, very good Grand Walker since it gets called so quickly and at the same time it allows it to summon one card from the family Tekadan in your trash without paying the cost although it doesn't call charge but it does say card Tekadan card so it's not restricted by the spirit it is not restricted by spells you could just easily just play those cards thanks to it and you can just um, go at it right at the get-go so in you can just drop in high cost spirits like cost eight take out spirit if, there, if there's any you can drop in maybe a smaller grunt unit for searcher if you're missing your searches and stuff like that he can do all those things and because it charged on four and not restricted by any like cost trick above any other than that so anything that you drop in early in the game like mobile workers can help to charge him up pretty fast and as for his flash by discarding a top trick out of your deck it works together with the grand skill and you can draw a card from your deck and during this turn your opponent can attack stat which is also very helpful considering how aggressive the deck is and the last thing they need is to get their attack stat stopped by maybe the burst war revival or anything like that which will be very um, in the way of their work of course not to mention that this card because with it being a pure purple ground walker also with a purple reduction you can consider playing some of the uh, more no known purple cards easily like uh, pass Hera which I was in discussion with my friends before. Snake Visions is one of those things that you can try. You can also go with things that place reviving, uh, retrieval. It will help this deck a lot. So you can consider those options as well. Okay. With that said, and that is all the cards that is currently available to us at this moment. So thank you all for watching. If you like what you see here today, do remember to subscribe to us on all our social, which is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, we recent uh, our Discord, which will be there on most nights, as well as our Twitch. We current we definitely already had our Twitch right now for us to do our Tuesday live stream for for Vanguard, and maybe one of these days we we'll also try to do for Battle Spirits. We we'll see how we we'll see how it goes to our schedule, and we will also be playing games there. So do come and join us when we are there. All right. Uh, with all that said, thank you all for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.